Hello, my name is Allison Miller, and this is a presentation critiquing Albert Bandura's social learning theory. Albert Bandura's social learning theory is a ground explanatory theory that posits that people learn from one another via observation, imitation, and modeling. This theory was developed to explain and predict behavior. This theory is also referred to as observational learning. Bandura witnessed the development of personality-driven theories and psychodynamic theories and saw the criticisms they both received. Bandura's social learning theory presents evidence to predict behavior and explain why people behave the way they do. A strength of this theory is that it explains behaviors not explained by classical and operant conditioning. This was evidenced by an experiment Bandura conducted in 1961 when he wanted to answer the question of man's aggressive behavior. In this experiment, called the Bobo doll experiment, Bandura took 36 boys and 36 girls aged three to six and separated them into three groups, the control group, aggressor group, and passive group. The children were put in the corner of a room with toys that they could not touch. In the experimental groups, an adult role model was present to either express aggressive behavior with the doll or play passively. After increasing the children's frustrations, they were taken to another room where the kids were allowed to play with toys. The results showed that those kids exposed to an aggressive model were more likely to show aggressive behavior. Social learning theory includes cognitive, cultural, and biological aspects that strengthen the theory. It potentially explains how cultural behavior is passed on through observation. Biologically, mirror neurons play a role in imitation. It depends largely on cognition. The theory has been more recently referred to as social cognitive theory for this reason. The main concepts of social learning theory are that learning occurs via observation, it is an internal process that may or may not change behavior. People behave in certain ways to reach goals. Behavior is self-directed, and reinforcement and punishment have indirect effects. The major assumptions of this theory are that humans are social beings who learn by observing the behavior of others and the outcomes. Observed behaviors that are rewarded will be repeated. Learning can sometimes occur without a change in behavior. And lastly, that cognitive processes play an important role in learning, that is, attention, memory, rehearsal, motivation, and expectations of reinforcement or punishment. This is a schematic that explains the steps in the social learning theory process. As stated here, the external forces are present when a learner observes a model's behavior being reinforced, which is also called vicarious reinforcement. The learner then self-regulates by providing attention to the model, remembering the behavior, reproducing and practicing the behavior, and finally the learner is motivated to perform the behavior or not perform the behavior based on the outcome he has observed. Bandura's theory relies on a concept called reciprocal determinism, which basically states that the world and a person's behavior cause each other. The necessary conditions for effective modeling are attention, retention, reproduction, and motivation, as shown in the previous slide. Attention is required for learning to occur through observation. People must attend to the model behavior in order to learn it. Modeled behaviors are most frequently attended to when they are behaviors exhibited by the people who one regularly associates with. Retention refers to simply remembering the modeled behavior. Motoric reproduction is necessary to fully integrate the behavior. And lastly, reinforcement and motivational processes must be present. As Bandura states, when positive incentives are provided, observational learning is translated into action. Some of the other concepts defined are self-efficacy, which is the confidence in ability to take action, reinforcement, which is responses to a person's behavior that either increase or decrease the chances of reoccurrence, expectations, which are beliefs about the likely results of actions, and behavioral capability, the knowledge and skills required to influence behavior. Theoretical definitions are implicit for some of the concepts relevant to social learning theory. Some theoretical statements are explained, although no model is provided. For example, the concept of reciprocal determinism is defined theoretically as the way the world and a person influence one another. This model 
is based on Bandura's theory, but it was created by another author. The three factors, environment, people, and behavior, are constantly influencing each other. Behavior is not simply the result of the environment and the person, just as the environment is not simply the result of the person and behavior. The environment provides models for behavior. Observational learning occurs when a person watches the actions of another person and the reinforcements that the person receives. The concept of behavior can be viewed in many ways. Behavioral capability means that if a person is to perform a behavior, he must know what the behavior is and have the skills to perform it. Bandura consistently utilizes these concepts and outcomes are predictable. However, these terms are not easily operationalized, measured, and assessed. It is a quite complex theory. Research does support the use of social learning theory in several areas. Social learning theory has been applied to areas such as nursing education, addressing psychosocial problems, and maximizing the use of support groups. The model of learning fits well with health education and staff development training. Promoting self-efficacy is important to encouraging patients' feelings of competency and to promote wellness rather than foster dependency and helplessness. The theory can also be applied to several social problems and accounts for cultural influence in learning. Research shows that social learning theory can be applied to myriad social and health issues from adolescent contraception use to HIV and AIDS transmission to simulation in nursing education. Social learning theory is one of the most significant theories for nursing research related to adolescent health promotion. It has also been used to develop successful nursing interventions. McEwen and Wills provide an example in a study conducted by Lynn in 2012 who studied the effects of a regular community-based physical activity program on metabolic parameters using social cognitive theory. The study found that regular physical activity significantly decreased the risk for metabolic syndrome. Here are three more articles that utilize social learning theory that cover various topics. It is important to notice that social learning theory accounts for cultural differences because it is a learning theory that includes the social factor. As social learning theory states, vicarious learning occurs through observing others and the outcome, which can obviously be quite different across cultures. And as you can see from these three articles, it can be applied across settings and cultures from pediatric dentistry to health education to predicting the dietary behavior of African Americans. Clearly, it's easy to see how this theory can be utilized in research practice and education. For example, Chen, Wang, and Hung use social learning theory as a framework to predict health-promoting self-care behaviors in pre-diabetics in a study published in Applied Nursing Research. The study revealed factors that had statistical correlations with health-promoting self-care behaviors, including personality factors such as self-efficacy and environmental factors such as social support. Therefore, healthcare providers should consider both personal and environmental factors when designing interventions for pre-diabetic patients. Bandura social learning theory is often used as a framework in research to explore health behaviors as it encompasses personal, social, and environmental factors into predicting and explaining those behaviors. It's also relevant to nursing education. For example, Bon applied social learning theory to nursing education. Her research determined a collaborative approach to learning through the use of peers and expert practitioners as role models is needed. Teachers must promote the concept of self-empowerment so students know they can acquire the skills and knowledge required to practice. The quality, the quality of those who provide a role model will dictate the quality of the nurses produced. As such, social learning theory has a lot of value when we look at how students become socialized in the profession and learn to be professional nurses. It's clear that social learning theory has a lot of use in exploring patient health behaviors. One such area that social learning theory could address is to examine self-care behaviors in patients with chronic heart failure. Heart failure is currently the most common reason for the hospitalization of Medicare recipients. The costs for preventable readmissions are estimated to be about $17 billion or 20% of Medicare's hospital payments. 
Patients with heart failure are frequently admitted to the hospital because they experience exacerbations in symptoms with fluid retention, shortness of breath, and fatigue on exertion. Considering the increasing prevalence, cost, and social burden to patients and their families, interventions that incorporate self-care with effective medical therapy are critical to optimize patient health and improve patient outcomes. Good self-care and symptom management can prevent hospitalizations and improve quality of life in patients with heart failure. Research describing personal and environmental factors that affect self-care behaviors could lead to improved patient education and interventions. Additionally, Bandura's concept of self-efficacy could be used as a framework to explore the relationship between the level of knowledge patients have and their self-care behaviors. Patients who feel empowered may be more likely to perform these behaviors. Bandura social learning theory has also led to the development of other middle-range nursing theories such as Nola Pender's health promotion model, Johnson's medication adherence model, and Lenz and Shortridge Baggett self-efficacy in nursing theory. Social learning theory is an explanatory theory that has many applications in nursing as well as many other disciplines. The concepts are difficult to operationalize and the theory itself is rather complex. However, it has a lot of value for research, practice, and education, and I would argue the development of middle range and practice specific theories. Empirical research has supported Bandura's theory in both experimental analogs of socialization and procedures for achieving therapeutic change, such as training in self-efficacy. The theory has evolved over the years and modifications have been made based on new data, which really goes to show that this is a theory that has withstood the test of time. In conclusion, Bandura's social learning theory is a theory that has withstood stood the test of time and been applied to many disciplines and in many contexts, including nursing. The theory fits well with health promotion and health education and understanding the behaviors that patients exhibit towards their health. Behaviors are learned, often from a young age, from observing those closest to us, whether that be family, friends, or coworkers. Providing role models to model good health behaviors can encourage healthy self-care behaviors. Much research can be conducted using this framework as it has proven success in generating positive outcomes and successful interventions. Thank you very much. The following are my references.